pencil gradient. Now, it's very simple. Uh, first of all, the template, don't use the template, don't draw on it. Use it to mark the squares and the rectangles onto whatever paper you're using. And to do that, you can measure, you can put it on the light table, you can use something. One quick way is to, um, I'm using bigger paper here, but I'm going to trim it later, is to take a push pin. Remember push pin? I don't know if we talked about push pins, but they're a great way to transfer information from one place to another. So um, I'm just going to mark all my corners there. And I'm going to do the whole thing now so I have it ready for when I demo all the parts here. And that's where I'm going to trim it eventually, so I have to be careful not to move it. And somebody said, why can't we just do it on this? Because today I printed it for you, but tomorrow I want, and so you wouldn't have it. I mean, you know, you might lose it. So now I can't see anything, and sometimes what I do if I can't see anything is I make a little arrow towards my... You can't see that either. You can't see nothing. Um, but I can't. I should have started with white. This is going to be my white. I'm just going to I can read the instructions and the instructions say add the border around your sheet, draw a thin dark border. Well, on the white, you probably want to draw a thin white border, which is what I'm going to do. straight on my box, um, which I think I'm going to do. How about that? That's even better. So I don't have to worry about doing the marking now. Now I don't know where it is. Where it is. Bear with me, okay? Until I get this. Um, again, post-its are the best. I can sell you my post-its for a penny a post-it. So, I, uh, okay. And until now, we have talked about really doing all your shading by doing uh, strokes, right? Like really distinct strokes. Um, but in this exercise, we're going to reverse ourselves and we're just going to do, um, we're going to do kind of continuous. So the trick is to really get that motion and don't commit yourself too, too quickly to the end of your um, area. So let's just say if that's like this. Because then you might find, uh oh, now it's too dark and you can't really erase it because if you erase it, it's not going to be so good. So just, uh, my pencils are getting shorter. Unfortunately, when they get shorter, I suppose one could get an extension, but it gets harder to hold. Uh, you can also hold it like this, like, uh, I don't know, instead of like that. So if you hold it like that, you can just go, uh, in other words, don't hold the pencil vertical because then you're going to get lines. This way, you have a nice, a nice surface, and you can just quickly. Uh, now, when it hits the masking material, it's going to have the little bump effect. So, and you just, you know, you really want to finish at zero, right? Um, so you go, and sometimes you want to blur your, blur your eyes, squint your eyes, 
so that you see a little bit of a blur and you are able to tell the uh, gradient much better. Uh, now with the pencil, it's really hard to get like solid black over here, right? But you can still try it. Um, now it's also hard to judge because the uh, the post-its are in the way. But when I remove them, it'll look it'll look really good. Uh, just a quick note about the extra stuff that's on I learned. That's an exercise that actually that Joseph Halbers uh, had his students do at Yale. Um, make a gradient of grays and colors. Uh, based on value, using little bits of paper. If you have nothing else to do, you can try making it. It's really hard, uh, but it's great training to train your eyes to see the gradient. Uh, so, okay, so let's see what happens when I take it off. Oh, I have an older thing there. Wait a minute. Doesn't look too good. In terms of the direction, well, the, the, the thumbnail kind of shows it, but that's the direction of the gradients, okay? So that means you're going to move your pencil the opposite direction of the arrow, right? And um, this one is going to be diagonal. Oops. So I'm sorry, so the direction is this way and the, and the stroke is the other way. That's too many errors. And then this one is going to be, the motion is going to be on a curve. All right. And then these guys are just pretty self-explanatory also. Um, all right. How many steps do you have? How many steps? You mean how many times you want to go over it? No, no, no. I mean, as far as the gradients at the bottom, should there kind of be some distinct steps as far as... Yeah, well, it, it should be from 0 to 100, right? So the question is, how even do you want to make your steps? The problem with 10%, um, it's, it's actually quite an interesting uh, problem, and it's this one. And that is that you, when you get to the dark, you quickly get too dark. Because, so I'm not, we're not going to go into like how to do this properly with pencils, but I know in painting there is a way to determine your gradients. Um, the main reason why this doesn't look so good is that it's the, the steps are too close. So if you do 100%, let's say you do 100, 90, 80, 70, blah, blah, until 20 and 10, what happens is that the difference between the 10 and the 20 is going to be 100%. But then as you move towards the black, it's going to be less and less. So the jumps are going to be... So essentially what's going to happen is that you know, maybe two-thirds are going to be really too dark and the rest is going to be light. So at this point, that's a little too complicated to even just use your, your eye and just try to get this, you know, a smooth gradient across so that, um, so that it feels good. I think what's, even in this one, what really looks good is that it has a nice round effect. Although, you know, it's hard to see. Yeah, it's, it's a little hard to see because it's just too small. So let's just say, you know, that's 100%, in this case, white, and that's 100% black. So you have to fade. So ideally, the edges of your, of your, um, you know, if this is black, here should be, it should fade to white. You shouldn't have anything there, right, at the very edge. And here you should have, you know, 100%. Okay, and then you go back. I think it's the, the tricks. The thing to do is you just, oops, sorry, <laughs> I was zooming out too much, is to go back and do it, you know, in several steps. And of course, lift your pencil so that you, you know, apply lighter marks as you go towards the light, and of course, press it harder when you're doing your darker, right? I mean, that's, that's one way of, of course, getting it to work. Uh, again, really, like, uh, squint your eyes a little bit. See how that how that helps. 
but um, let's just do one. Uh, now with white, of course, it's going to be the opposite, right? And I actually couldn't find, by the way, again, once again, the, the Prisma colors are going to be soft and the uh, Verithin are going to be uh, harder. And also your paper. I just picked some paper that I found here, but if you pick paper that's too textured, you're going to get all those marks that they're going to get a little bit in the way. Uh, so don't go too rough with the paper. Don't pick paper that's really too rough. Um, and you can do, you know, you can practice, see what you prefer. The, the, um, the further thing, again, it doesn't, it's not as, um, as rich, you know, as the Prisma color. So the Prisma color is really nice and, uh, you know, you can kind of see it there. I almost did the same motion and look at that. That's, that's somehow a little more transparent. You know, if I want to get that, I have to, you know, I really have to go down and, and it's still not as nice. It's more, the fibers are more um, refined. So it, it looks more, uh, more even. But maybe you don't want that. I think it's nice to have a little texture, you know. So you can see it's still a drawing and not, you know, some kind of printing thing. Yeah, you can see it here that the Prismacolor is really picking up the texture much more than the very thin because the very thin is so smooth. Okay. Um, well, let's just do a test. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna use. Prisma color because it's it feels better actually you know when you apply it so again align align your hand with you know the the opposite direction as your stroke and just and just try to be you know really really even and you can do it this way or particularly if your pencil has gotten has gotten too short just grab it like that you know like a whatever like something that you poke somebody with. Um, so, and just start, you know, start at the top, and oops, I got underneath. Uh, you have to do it light. If you do it too hard, it's going to hit the paper. And so now I'm just going to stop. I don't know if you can see anything. Uh, not so much, yeah. It's a tough one for the screen, particularly with all this light, but... Yeah, the camera is way you know less sensitive than the human eye, so you're not gonna see, you're gonna at some point it's just gonna break up on the on the screen between whatever it thinks it's white and whatever it thinks it's black, and you know there's no way to show that, but you will see it in the uh, in the video, okay? Um, so really, I mean this really should be very very straightforward. If I, if you squint your eyes, you can kind of see, uh, I still have a little bit of a, again, I'm doing it this more for the benefit of the video than for the screen, because I have a feeling it looks all the same up there, uh, a little bit. So, um, maybe one thing you should think about is, okay, let make, let's make sure that if I were to isolate maybe the central section, that, that, that that looks like a 50% uh, grade. That's why the Albers exercises are really, really cool because you you do them over a 50% gradient, I mean 50% uh, background, and in the middle it completely blends with whatever you're doing. So now, you know, if I had like a piece of paper that was 50% and I would put it right here, I would say, oh, okay, that already looks right. So. Try to sort of keep that midpoint in mind, you know, that 50% to be, in fact, in the middle and not, you know, either there or there. The tendency is going to be that you're going to do it too much towards the end, and it's going to somehow be more over here. Um, and then when you're done with all the other ones as well, um, okay, now if I, if I remove this, I'm not going to know where my edge is, so I'm just going to make a little dot here.
unfortunately, by drawing a line at the bottom here, I'm going to kind of kill that, that nice gradient. But uh, what can I do? Life is so hard. Um, you know what I mean, though? It's so nice that it fades to black, right? Uh, but the stupid assignment sheet says draw a border around it. And now if I do, yeah, it's going to be okay, I guess. There. Okay. Um, so, essentially you just repeat that in the different directions. So for this one on this side, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be going the other way. I'm just going to do it really rough now so that we have it for the record. So it's going to go this way. Again, you're going to have your masking and everything. And try not to do zigzag, yeah? Because, so try to maybe just go like that. Um, let's see. Since this is on video, I'm going to use a nice yellow. Stroke direction. Oops. Uh, and then the other ones, one is diagonal and the other is round. So the diagonal one, like that. This is bad because I'm trying to, you know, stick to the borders, but since you're going to have your, your, your masking, it's not going to affect. So maybe the harder one is the, uh, is the round one, because in this case, yeah, you're going to have to use your wrist here, right? Unless, yeah, that's, that's the way it's going to be. Um, The curve doesn't have to be very tight, you know, it can be a fairly open curve. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, like that, it can be like this. Okay. So this is going to be like that. And then the last ones are... Yeah, one fading out this way and one fading towards the middle. Okay. So I'm just gonna leave this really schematic. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to finish because it's best to just do it. But again for the benefit of the video. And posterity, we'll just do it this way. So the stroke is going this way, and that's wrong, of course. So I'll fix that tiny one here. Stop me, guys, okay? <laughs> this was meant to be like that. Okay. So this one is wrong. It's easier to see on white. Post-its are great. Later on when we're going to do like reflections, it's 
a really quick way to do a like a reflection by erasing some of the drawing. You just put two post-its next to each other and get a nice clean, like shiny reflection. Okay, so you might even like want to practice maybe off, outside of your box. You know, so you kind of start a little bit of a dry run outside the box, and then you, you, know, you come in. And I'm, I'm already going light because I know I'm going to overdo it. By the way, guys, did you see that I posted the videos of Todd's demo and everything? Yes. Yeah. That was pretty cool. And also there was another great video with contour lines from Spencer Nugent who uh, did that great tutorial on contour lines. Uh, he was drawing the earphones. I thought that was really beautiful. Uh, see, it's nice to have something to say when you do something completely mindless <laughs> because it keeps your rhythm going. Uh, this paper is not the best, you know, I'm just using Xerox paper. So, okay, and then go back in and try to, I think once you get a general feel for it going, then go back in and do, you know, and then do the top like really, really dark, because that's going to help, right? That's going to kind of tell the story you're trying to do 100 to 0. Uh -huh in six seconds. Okay. All right. Um, and, you know, even though we're doing um, almost a chiaroscuro thing rather than doing our strokes, a little imperfection is nice, right? Because, again, it's a drawing. It's not a photo. And to be able to see a little bit of the strokes is okay. So let me just do the border on that. The border should be thin and thin and light, you know, just like a just kind of because what might happen is that maybe you go off a little bit, so the border helps bring it back to bring it back in line. And, uh, and you know, maybe here where it's the 100%, I go like solid and I'm going to even like fill in. So that's cheating a little bit, but it's going to make my edge there really nice, right? Just, just that one edge, see? Nice. And uh, I'm going to stop now. <laughs>